everyone, this is John. Welcome back to another episode of The Subcontinent. Our program aims to address important issues in the region of South Asia which affect the governments, people, organizations and the region as a whole. We will try to explain, discuss, analyze and break down controversies surrounding them and try to have some external perspectives from experts and people. In this edition of The Subcontinent, we will talk about Chabahar port in southeastern Iran and its significance for the Indian economy and politics. We shall also discuss India's prospects and challenges in the oceanic port. Chabahar has been a key connectivity project for India because it can connect India to Afghanistan and beyond via Iran. India has big plans for Chabahar and has recently accelerated its efforts to make the project fully operational. But New Delhi should take into consideration a great deal of factors, such as the railway networks of Asia and the cost-benefit analysis of the ongoing construction projects in the port, as well as the repercussions of the comprehensive deal between Iran and China. Located on the Makran coast of Iran's southeastern Sistan and Balochistan province, next to the Gulf of Oman and at the mouth of the Strait of Hormoz, Chabahar Oceanic Port consists of two separate ports, each with several berths, Shahid Kalantari and Shahid Beheshti. India and Iran first agreed on plans to further develop Shahid Beheshti port in 2003, but the project was stalled mainly due to US sanctions. In 2016, Tehran and New Delhi signed another bilateral agreement to create a momentum for the development of the strategic port. According to the deal, India would refurbish one of the 10 berths at Shahid Beheshti port and reconstruct container handling facility at the port. For India, the Chabahar port is of great importance uh, since it will allow from India's west coast, which is uh, you know, a major manufacturing and exporting area, to send stuff not only to Iran and Afghanistan, but beyond uh, through the Caucasia, uh, to the Caspian Sea, into Russia. I think that was the long-term plan uh, that exists. And uh, this is like, it is not quite like you know, China's Belt and Road initiative or anything like that, but this is also an opening up of West for India. The agreement entailed $8 billion investment in Chabahar port and its special economic zone, including an aluminum smelter and a urea-making facility. In December 2018, Indian company Ports Global Limited took over the port operations and as of August 2020, the port has handled 1.2 million tons of cargo and 82,000 containers. India also used the port to send 75,000 tons of wheat to Afghanistan as part of the humanitarian aid amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Chabahar is at the junction of important trade corridors in Asia, with the potential to serve as a connectivity hub from all directions along the east-west and south-north lines. However, the port is facing some challenges because for the transit of goods to be effective, the port should also be connected to the railroad network of the region. This means that all the regional pairs may have to prioritize their aligned interests rather than their rivalries. Chabahar can provide an alternative route for trade between India and Afghanistan and accelerate and extend India's reach to Asian, European and Middle Eastern markets. It is 800 kilometers closer to the border of Afghanistan than Pakistan's Karachi port. As a fulcrum of connectivity to Central Asia, Chabahar route will also reduce India's shipment cost to the region by 60% and drop the shipment time to half. India is also counting on a 900 kilometer railway line that would connect Chabahar to the Hajigak region in central Afghanistan, which contains Asia's largest deposit of iron ore. 
The railway to Hajigak can significantly increase India's trade because it connects to the North-South Transport Corridor, a 7,200-kilometer-long multi-mode network of ship, rail and road route for moving freight between India, Iran, Afghanistan, Azerbaijan, Russia, Central Asia, Turkey and Europe. With links to Bandar Abbas port and Chabahar port, Kabul is no longer dependent on Pakistan to reach the outer world. This also gives India access to Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan. India and Afghanistan also plan to extend rail route from Herat to mazar -e sharif that is already linked with Uzbekistan and Tajikistan via rail as well as with other Central Asian nations via road routes. Iran, Afghanistan and India should concentrate very much in making uh, developing Chabar port into a major hub for uh, trade from entire Asia particularly Southeast Asia and uh, even part of East Asia and South Asia uh, and uh, connecting that with Iran, Afghanistan and Central Asia and beyond and this will make Chabahar port as important a port as you know, Gwada port is going to be or I think it's more than Bandar Abbas this will be more important uh, for uh, the Asian, uh, I would say, uh, uh, connectivity. And um, it will benefit all the countries, the region as a whole, because Central Asia stability is as important to Afghanistan and Iran as Iran and Afghanistan's prosperity is good for Central Asia. India is faced with many other challenges to actualize its aspirations in Jawahar and is deeply concerned about losing the competition to China especially after Beijing's agreement with Tehran. Even before the deal, China had already invested a great deal of money in Pakistan's Gawadar port, Chabahar's sister port that is often earnestly seen as a regional rival. Iran had even proposed to connect Chabahar with Gawadar. Dismayed by the draft of China's 25-year agreement with Iran and hefty investment in Pakistan's Gwadar port, New Delhi felt the need for a more robust foothold in Chabahar and moved to speed up the implementation of the project. India's greater attention to ties with Iran is obviously seen by the back-to-back -back visits of the country's defense and foreign ministers to Tehran. Finally, India cancelled a $30 million contract with Shanghai Zhenhua Industries for heavy cranes, citing delays by the Chinese company in supplying the equipment ordered in 2017. Following a new tender for cranes with 65-ton capacity required for moving heavy cargo, the rail-mounted Quay cranes were procured from an Italian company and delivered to the port around mid-January. Among the obstacles in India's path to realize Chabahar as the anchor for the expansion of economic relations is the sanctions imposed on Iran by the United States. Although Chabahar port has been granted a waiver, Washington's measures against Tehran are detrimental to economic relations, creating more setbacks for New Delhi and further reproachment by its arch rivals China and Pakistan. While the focus and thrust are mainly on connectivity and geopolitics, it is probably the economy that can make the countries of the region interested in the projects to develop Chabahar port. Cooperation and inclusion of potential stakeholders such as Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan, as well as Afghanistan, have already boosted international calls to expedite the projects. The first trilateral meeting between India, Iran and Uzbekistan on the joint use of Chabahar port that was held virtually in mid-December marked a quick move in diplomacy. It was held a few days after it was proposed by Uzbek President Shavkat Mirziyoyev during a virtual summit with Premier Narendra Modi. The next trilateral is already in the works with Afghanistan. Uzbekistan is Central Asia's most populous nation with ample reserves of uranium, gold, coal and oil. It can increase and facilitate its exports thanks to the port. 
Tashkent's interest in Chabahar port marks a flexing point in India's efforts to build a communication route to Afghanistan and central India that outflanks Pakistan. Kazakhstan is also keen on involvement in Chabahar port. The envoy of the landlocked country to India has said the process has already initiated. Chabahar port also provides direct access to India's Farkor Air Base in Tajikistan, another landlocked country in Central Asia which can benefit from the port. Moreover, several conferences and exhibitions have been planned to gather representatives from the Eurasian countries to the port. New Delhi's proposal to observe Chabahar Day was widely welcomed by all the involved parties. The significance, as I said, is that uh, India's access to West, and West, when I say West, it's not uh, Europe per se, which is, of course, but Iran, Afghanistan, all situated of India's West, and eventually Central Asia, at least particularly countries like Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, and these can be accessed to Chabar port and then to Iran and then to Caspian Sea or the railroad that the Iran has built all along the western coast of uh, uh, Caspian Sea. Uh, India can send its material uh, and their goods uh, through there and at the same time it, it is a, you know, a two-way route so things can come in from Central Asia Afghanistan, Iran, and Russia and Europe as well to India. And uh, this, is, this is going to enhance India's capability to develop an economic and trade relationship with its Western countries, which they don't have any other way of doing it other than, as I said, you can do it by, they're doing it by Suez, but it is awfully expensive. And it uh, takes enormous amount of time uh, this will cut down the time significantly and uh, it will also develop a very strong uh, and uh, quick relationship with the Central Asian countries which, which, with which India has only air connection, nothing else. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now to have more insight and analysis, we are joined by Dr. Ishtiaq Ahmed. He's a scholar and lecturer at Jawaharlal Nehru University. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, welcome to the show. So. What are India's hopes and plans for Chabahar port? Yeah, you know, uh, this uh, Chabahar port, as far as uh, uh, our economic ties with Iran is concerned, it's very important. In the sense, uh, India as well as Iran, both the country together, but uh, mainly India, had been very deeply interested in developing this uh, port uh, for uh, evolving a better bilateral economic cooperation between India and Iran. That's why it can be said that uh, it's a dream project for India, in fact, and no doubt uh, Iran had also been equally interested in having this project and both the countries had been working for over several years in making this uh, uh, this project functional. There are uh, other countries also in fact involved in the uh, whole plan, the role of Afghanistan as well as uh, the role of Central Asian countries even the role of Russia had been important. And if I, if I recall cal correctly, all of them are working together uh, for several years. And uh, we had a big hope as far as this uh, uh, project is concerned. So it's an important project and many other countries are involved. Uh, you mentioned Afghanistan. What does Chabahar port mean for the relations between India and Afghanistan? Okay, of course, uh, uh, frankly speaking, uh, India had always been interested in having good relationship with Afghanistan. Uh, we have seen the role of India had been very major in the uh, reconstruction of 
uh, Afghanistan, particularly after you know the turmoil and all that uh, Afghanistan had been subjected to. So uh, it was some 20 years back. Uh, I had been in the uh, ministries. I had I have worked in the ministries. I have seen on the certain occasions that uh, India had been contributing well uh, to see that uh, Afghanistan's uh, the would, uh, uh, economic condition improved. Afghanistan was passing through a very bad phase, and still there are many more issues. Uh, as you said that why it is important okay, well, Afghanistan is important for us uh, from the geopolitical uh, a point of view also uh, we are interested in Afghanistan government of India is interested is in Afghanistan Indian uh, trade partners businessmen they all are interested in Afghanistan but we do not have uh, you know a suitable route to Afghanistan, it can only and only be possible through Chabahar because Pakistan is a factor between India and uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan never uh, encouraged the idea of uh, going to uh, Afghanistan or having, you know, uh, better economic ties or better uh, trade relationship as far as the route is concerned. Where is the route? We don't have uh, uh, the suitable route uh, because of the uh, uh, discouragement policy on the part of the Pakistan. Had this not been there, obviously uh, it was very easy to uh, move our goods, move our containers, move our, uh, you know, promote our trade and commerce uh, through land routes all only. But it's not possible. Many times India has tried its best. Indian government has shown its magnanimity, especially I have seen the time of uh, our former Prime Minister Adal Bihari Vajpayee. He took a delegation to Pakistan. But it has not worked in the sense there had not been encouraging uh, response from Pakistan. Pakistan always discouraged the fact that India and Afghanistan should not come closer. But uh, I think as far if this uh, Chabahar port is made functional, it will be very easy for India to have better uh, economic relationship, better trade and commerce, better bilateral relations in terms of uh, uh, economy through Chabahar port. Means through uh, entering uh, 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 Iran to Chabahar port and going right up to Afghanistan will be the superb idea. And you know, the Afghanistan will be benefited. Of course, India will be benefited. And the role of Iran will certainly be very important here. Iran is also going to be benefited. This can be a, a good combination of the uh, three countries. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, our team has compiled a few sections of the media coverage in this regard. So I would appreciate that before continuing, we could take a look at it and then move on. In a meeting with Pakistan ambassador to Iran in mid-December, the director general of Sistan Baluchistan Ports and Maritime Department said that based on their needs and interests, Pakistan and other neighboring countries of Iran can invest in Chabahar port without any restrictions. Chabahar port is hub of bonding ports of the region with one another, he said, adding that strengthening connection of countries and their mutual cooperation is one of the missions of this port. Both India and Uzbekistan seek to achieve a bilateral trade turnover of 1 billion US dollars, but have actually reached only one third of that landmark. A major factor inhibiting the development of closer trade and economic relationship is the absence of economic and efficient service connectivity. Both sides believe that the Chabahar route can be the key to address this problem. India's envoy to Uzbekistan, Manish Prabhat, has said that Chabahar can become a fulcrum of transit between India and Central Asia. 
a 70% discount on tariffs and lowering transit costs through Chabahar port have been so effective that Chabahar loading and unloading figure has reached to 2 million tons while it was merely 200,000 tons just a few years ago, according to Iran's ports and maritime organization. Many of the country's neighbors are currently choosing Chabahar port as their main trade route. The goal of the port is now to attract regional markets, including India and Afghanistan, and also the Commonwealth of Independent States, which can use Chabahar port to transit their goods with an average of 70% discount. Speculation is rife that the $400 billion deal between Tehran and Beijing could pave the way for China's investment in Iranian ports, including the strategic Chabahar port. India has high stakes in Chabahar and has been genuinely worried about China gaining foothold there, especially after unconfirmed reports that Iran dropped New Delhi from the Zahedan rail project and started negotiating a long-term deal with Beijing. It comes even at a time of heightened tensions between India and China following a series of clashes between the two armies in border regions. Welcome back, Dr. Ahmed. So, continuing from the previous question, you said that uh, Afghanistan is important because of geopolitics, economics, and of course, there's a huge Pakistan factor as well. But what about the United States and what happened during the elections? How will the Biden administration and its decision on Iran sanctions influence the future of Chabahar port? No, of course, due to sanctions, uh, anybody can see that, that there are certain things is... Uh, yeah. It, it's not uh, going well had there not been uh, sanctions. Uh, India and Iran could have worked uh, more effectively, but due to sanctions, not only sanctions, but due to some restrictions also, and uh, especially in terms of we have uh, some, some few years back, uh, we have seen that payment was a big problem due to sanctions. The payment process is also affected, the banking thing is also affected. So uh, India tried his best to, uh, to to do well and just to overcome those shortcomings, but still there was there. Uh, had these sanctions not been in Iran, obviously India and uh, Iran have, uh, could have uh, worked uh, more effectively and the result would have been better. All right, so I understand that the sanctions are a huge barrier between uh, Iran and India in terms of the Chabahar port. Uh, India hopes to keep China away from the Chabahar port. Can it succeed? You know, it's very clear. Of course, uh, uh, China has no role to play here, to be very frank. It's a, in this project, if you look at the project, if you look at the, you know, partner countries, you know, there are, uh, if I recall correctly, there had been around 10 partner countries. Yes, small countries are also there. You know, uh, uh, there are many more uh, uh, Central Asian countries and uh, they had been working together. The role of China uh, is not there. So it's not fair to say that uh, India is India may not be interested in keeping China away. I think China should be away from these things because this is, this is a project between India and Iran and Afghanistan and the Central Asian countries and even some country uh, from the Russian part. So where China has the role, China has no role. So we should be very clear on that. China should not uh, try to uh, stop any sort of, you know, progress and development which is taking, uh, uh, which is taking place or which is emerging out of our. Uh, uh, mutual in, uh, interest, our mutual uh, uh, bilateral trade and commerce interest, especially with Iran or Central Asian countries and even Afghanistan. So I don't see that China has a role to play. Why should China uh, uh, should have a space here? China, I should. Uh, it's not that India is trying. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was our show on the Chabahar port and India's prospects for the port. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns, feedbacks or comments, please let us know through our social media accounts because our team works really hard to make the show as best as possible for you. Until next time, 
थैंक यू एंड गुड बाय